Uh, I just, I was tired of living. I was tired of life. I cursed God, cussed at him, hollered at him, you know, flipped my fingers off at him. But you know, but God was merciful and he came down and softened my heart and got me to a point where he, he personally spoke to me. He said, and I believe it was the Holy Spirit that spoke to me. He said, please forgive the Lord thy God. And he, he went on three times like this. Now to understand this, you know, I was, I was power washing at that time. It was, a, it was a business I had. And I was in a hog building by myself about 10 o'clock at night. Had these earplugs in using a turbo auger. And that thing just was loud as all get out. And I heard that sweet little voice that said, please forgive the Lord thy God. And when I, I shut everything down because I was scared to death because that's the first time I ever heard his voice. I mean, literally, I thought somebody was in the room. So I, I shut it down, walked around the building, nothing going on. Started it back up and it said it again. Well, on the third time, it said it again. And I shut everything down, was getting ready to go look around again. And all of a sudden, he flooded my mind with everything. The reason why he asked that is because all the, me taking my fingers and flipping it off at God and stuff, you know, and, and cursing at him. And I said, how dare you still my, take my child like this? But see, and then I said, I said, you know what? I said, I do. I forgive. Well, the reason why I had, to, I had to forgive because I had unforgiveness in my heart toward God. And God had to get that out of the way so that he could work on me. Well, I didn't know that until now, a little bit later on. So that night, that very same night, I couldn't even talk about Bradley. I'd start crying, you know. If even just mentioned him, I just, I had to turn and walk away because, you know, it broke my heart. But that night, the Lord took that. I felt him right off my shoulders go like this, lifted up right off my shoulders. And the very same time and moment, he healed my heart that very night. And about two weeks later, about two weeks later, he got a hold on me again, but this night was the night, the time is now. The time is now. He said that three times. And conviction was all over my heart. I threw my hands up and I said, okay, Lord, I'll see where this goes. That was 18 years ago. And the very, I went through that, I went all through that day not thinking nothing of it, but the next day I was getting ready to grind some feed because I worked in a mill. And uh, I sat there and had all the ingredients together to put in a grinder mixer and stuff. And all of a sudden, uh, the Lord spoke to me again. He said, he said, uh, he goes, now go confess it. And I looked at him, I said, or I didn't look at him, I said, confess what? So he did that in three, every time he did something, it was in three times. And I said, and on the third time, I said, I said, Lord, I don't understand, confess what? And I said it like that too. And he said, go tell Randy about your salvation. And now Randy was the guy that I worked under, but he also was a Pentecostal preacher that, that he would share the gospel with me and tell me the stories of the Bible. We, this went on for seven months. We would sit for hours and hours after work, after working all day, you know, 10, 12 hours. And we'd sit and he'd sit there and talk. We'd, I'd listen to him for two hours. And he asked me a question one day, and I just want you guys to think about this today while you're, while you're sitting here, before we get ready to get worship. We're going to have some worship and testimony, and then we'll get into the Word. But uh, he asked me the question. He said, if you died right now, where would you spend eternity, heaven or hell? And see, like I told you, I said, I already knew because uh, growing up, uh, I'd been churched. I went to church. I knew about the conviction. I knew about heaven and hell. And I said, well, I'd split hell wide open. He kind of looked at me and he said, really? Pause for a second and he goes, you should go to church? And I said, yeah, you used to be a Pentecostal church. And he went, he couldn't believe it because he never said anything to him about it. You know, never, just didn't think it was important. And then uh, it kind of made me think about it. You know, where would I spend eternity? But just think about that. You know, your gears are turning in your mind. Think about where you're spending eternity tonight. If you was to die, like right now, big old plane, big old 747 dropped on you, squished you, bam, it's done. I mean, sorry, I get excited sometimes. And it was, I mean, I'm telling you, the word says that we're not promised tomorrow. But, you know, I just want you to think about that. You know, where will you spend eternity? So, but anyways, um, but God got a hold of me, you know. Didn't think I was going to stand up in front of people and give the word and stuff like this. You know, I, I was so backwards. I remember a pastor one time, my, my, one of my pastors one time, he said, Brother, you do, Sunday, you do the Sunday morning prayer? I said, sure. And I lost my voice just like that. I went, no way. No way. I couldn't even talk. I mean, I lost it that quick. I walked out of church after service was over and got my voice back. But I told him, I said, I will do it next Sunday. So next Sunday he rolled around. He said, brother, you want to do Sunday morning prayer? I said, sure. I, I went, okay. Got my voice. 
So I get up there and I hand me a piece of paper and I got about, it was about 35, 40 people. And if I stood in front of two or three people, I'd probably start doing you know, start shaking and stuff like this, you know. Well, the next thing I know, I started doing that. So I turned around, hit the pastor standing right here beside me, I turned around like this going, Phew. I started almost like, I almost had to go almost grab me a bag because I felt like I was hyperventilating there, you know, and stuff like this. He said, brother, he said, you got this. I said, let me pray, let me pray. So I, I went ahead, I prayed, I prayed for myself right there on the spot. And I calmed down. And I turned back around. I started getting nervous again. I said, Lord, you got this. You got this. I don't know. Ten prayer requests. Wrote them down. I put my head down like this. And when I prayed, I put my head down just enough where I could read that. And we prayed. I got through it, okay? That was the beginning of standing in front of people. So if God's called you to do something in front of people, he'll start you out slowly. He's going to start you out gently. He knows what you can handle and you can't handle. You know, he'll start you out with the small things. See, this is what God will do. God will start you with a small thing. God is so trustworthy and so wonderful that he tr he'll start you with a, a small thing to get to where you get into it and you get used to it. And, and he gets where he trusts you with this. Then he goes like this. He'll all of a sudden, he'll start moving you up. He'll start trusting you with more things. And that's what he told me one day after I was sitting there teaching Sunday school because I did that for seven years. He goes, I have trusted you with little. Now I'm going to trust you with much. And I went, what? I trust you with little, I'm going to trust you with much. And I went, okay. It's like, well, I didn't know he was going to trust me with this. You know what I'm saying? Brother Mike, I don't know if anybody here knows Mike Orney. He's, uh, he's, he's one of the pastors here. Jennifer's his wife. Uh, they, Mike's on the road right now. He's, uh, he's on his way back. Should be back tonight. So y'all have to put up for me tonight. Praise God. <laughs> Everybody come expecting God to move. Amen. I'll tell you what, I have been praying all morning. And I tell you what, I have felt this peace that's been overwhelmed on me all day. I said, Lord, I mean, I, I started out this morning. I said, Lord, I said, you got, you got to preach to me. Lord, you got to do this. I can't do this. You know, I still do that still. And all of a sudden there, just, I felt that, you know, my spirit rising up. I felt my, his spirit bearing witness with my spirit. And I was kind of like, you got this. Amen. But see, that's my insurance. I need that. And all day I just, I felt this peace. I mean, I'm still going through some little things here and there because the devil's still trying to attack. He was still shooting them fiery darts. But you know what? I had the shield of faith on, you know. I had the full armor on, suited up in it. Amen. I was, whew, <laughs> See, I was suited up in that armor today. And God had me. He had his hand on me, protecting me because he knew what was going on tonight. And I said, Lord, I said, you're going to move tonight, ain't you? Amen. And that's what I'm expecting. I, and I seen a couple posts on, her, on, on Facebook earlier about, you know, the Holy Ghost fire. I come expecting God to move. Change lives, change hearts tonight. Amen? Amen. Because I'm going to tell you something. I don't care what you're going through or what you're struggling with or what you're fighting with. God is a God. He can change anything. He'll move a mountain. He'll go out of his way just to move a mountain out of your way just so that he can, so that you can have peace or joy or love or, you know, God cares. He's a God that cares. He said, cast all your cares upon him for he cares. He cares. Really, he does. Amen? So, I want to... I want to hear some testimonies now. I know I got a good one right back there. I'm going to call her out right now, first one. I want to hear the sister's testimony back here, if y'all don't mind. Sister Dora. Dor, 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 Dor. Hey, Scorch, come up up here. Don't mind. This one needs Kathy. This is a great testimony. My name's Dara. I call her Dora. Dora. <laughs> a lot of people do. Um, about 10 years ago, 2010, is when my story really started. <clears throat> I uh, let my brother babysit for me, lived with me for eight months. Long story short, um, one of my stepsons got hurt. I got um, charged with neglect for letting him babysit because he wasn't licensed. I got a 16-year sentence. I did five years in prison and have been on probate, was on probation, and am still on probation. Um, for another year. Um, during my prison time, I was so angry at God, and I had been using the whole time, you know, from the age of eight. And I was so angry at God because I felt like it was his fault that my kids were taken, and that all this was happening to me. I was in prison. I didn't know what to do. And one day I was walking up the walk back to the dorm, and I just heard in my mind something say you need to forgive your brother and I said no 
no, and I, I was just like, no, I can't. And it said it again, you need to forgive your brother. So I went to the chapel and I talked to the chaplain and told him everything. And I watched a Louis Giglio video, um, How Great Is Our God, the How Great Is Our God tour. It's an amazing video if you guys haven't watched it. And I went to church all my life, but I really didn't care because I felt like it got shoved down my throat. And no pastor had ever showed me how big God was. But when I watched Louie show me how big the God that we serve is, I was overwhelmed. Like, oh my, this is the God that we, this is God? And I uh, became a Christian that day. Um, I studied Reformed theology for four years. I, God just took over. Um, I got out of prison. I was feeling really good. Started to backslide, get away from the church, isolate myself. Um, I started getting in trouble again. And then I started to come to church here. And it was the best decision I ever made because ever since I've been coming to church here, God has just been working and working and working on me and slowly changing me and having a charge like I have, not being able to work with kids. My two oldest kids are actually here tonight. And um, I did vacation Bible school over the summer here. And on the night that everybody graduated, Pastor Dustin asked me to teach Sunday school here on Sundays. And I said yes. And it, it's been such a joy to me to teach the kids. And I love it, and I love the opportunity to work with the kids. And I'm still dealing with um, probation violations, but thanks to God and everybody, my support system, the church, and what God, it's not me at all, it's God that's doing it all, because I wouldn't do it if it was my choice. But God is living in me. I know that he is, because the way I lived before, that was the what I chose to do. God's using me. And <clears throat> they offered me um, the rest of my probation time in prison, which would be another year. But God sent an attorney to me, and as he's kept working on me through this, they're just going to continue my probation. No more jail time. And the stuff in Fayette County that I didn't actually commit is going to be dropped. And I just am so thankful. You know, I went to my probation today in Richmond, and my probation officer was so upset that they are just going to continue my probation instead of he wants me to serve jail time. That's fine. He can think whatever he wants to think, but I'll pray for him. But, you know, I always take Pinville Road back to Connersville. For some reason, I didn't turn on Pinville. It took me an hour and a half to get back to Connors and I had it on Caleb like I always do and I'm like God where am I <laughs> I'm just going back home where am I an hour and a half later but the whole time I'm listening to Caleb and all these songs are just filling in me and I'm talking to God the whole time it's like thank you for being in my life Amen. it's not perfect but he is sanctifying me every day Amen. and convicting me and he, if he can use me in everything that I've done, he can use anybody. That's that's why I like for people. I try to encourage people to uh, get up there and testify, because you know what she, where God has brought her up to now, somebody in here might be going through it. That's just an encouragement to you, showing that God is no respect for person. What God will do for one, he will do the other. God will bring you through. Like I said, you know, God, God will move them mountains out of your way. He will pull. I mean, he will yank those mountains just for you. I mean, each and every one of you individually, he will move those mountains, those strongholds, those things that are in your lives. Those addictions, if you got those addictions, you know, drugs, alcohol, you know, sexual addictions, you know, uh, any, any kind of other addictions, God can set you free because... You know, and he's the one that will give the anointing that destroys the yokes of bondage. Amen. And we believe that. We believe in the we believe in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We believe in Jesus Christ in him crucified. And we preach the word here, the truth. Because 
you know, how, how are you going to know the truth to, to set you free unless you get in the word yourself, too? But you've got to be in a church that preaches the word. It is a little warm in here. So. You know why it's so important to praise God? Because when you praise him, he said he inhabits the praise of Israel. When he inhabits the praise of Israel, when the Lord comes down, he says when we two or three gather in his name, he said he'll be in the midst of them. So I see more than two or three we've gathered in his name, Jesus. So I know he's in the midst of us. See, when we worship God, when we worship him, oh, his presence comes down. And it changes the atmosphere. So that's why it's really important to worship God. Because these things, is, these things that you're going through and these trials and tribulations that you're going through, God is going to set you free. God is going to bring you through it, yeah. no matter what it is. Amen? Amen. Woo! <laughs> Boy, I don't know about you, but man, I feel the presence of God strong right now. Yeah, right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, brother. Testify if you got a word. Come on. Said, Terry, I'm the church, man. You can turn my heart to today, man. He's like, all I want to do is give up, man. I just want to give up. You know, drop this freaking sweatshirt, drop all this stuff. Like, I want to give up today, man. Like, I had a, I had a 45 in my mouth this morning, man. And I told myself it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. God's got me. Amen. God got you, brother. No, 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 don't ever apologize, brother, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, my leg's broken, all this stuff, you're right, come here, come here, come here, I've been sitting two months, two months with a broken leg, it's the, it's the time to reflect, it's the time to draw close to God, brother, you gotta draw close to him, I miss Mike, I miss you, I miss all y'all, Glad you're here tonight, brother. That's what here. I said you're here tonight. See, <laughs> see, that's why. That's why we have this. This is outreach. You know, this is not church as usual. We're here to reach everyone. But the see the the so-called normal churches reject. You know. I know, like, I know. I'm sorry, man, but like it fucking it hurt. I'm sorry, man. Like I'm sorry, man. It just messes me up, man. Like <clears throat> if you, Terry, Mike, and this guy right here, Jennifer, like well, Terry, I have to, I have forty, I have forty five in my mouth tonight. Hey, today, this morning. See, God stopped it. God stopped it. God stopped it. You're here tonight, okay? God was with you. He stopped it tonight. He's got a plan for you and a purpose for you, brother. Amen. Oh, I'm sorry, Terry. No, 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 no. No. I lost my girl. I lost my girlfriend. I lost everybody. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have had a girlfriend. I'm too destroyed to have one. Like, and I lose that, and I lose this, and I lose that, and like, my mom's dying of cancer. My grandma's dying of cancer. Man, it just, it's so hard for me, man. Like. I've never lost anybody close to me, man. Yeah. And my mom, you know, my fucking best friend Katie brings a wig to my mom and shit. And I, I'm so sorry for cussing. I'm sure so I am, but my mom brings a wig to somebody that, you know, my mom, like, my friend brings a wig to my mom because she's got cancer. Like, it, it destroys me. Yeah, it does hurt, brother. It does hurt. It does hurt. <laughs> I've never said a word to Mom never said a word to me about that. Man, it just destroys me. I'm sorry, man. You're all right, man. You're all right. You're all right. Come here. You're all right. I'll stop. Let's just, let's get, can I get in the Word? Absolutely. Huh? Absolutely. Please. We'll pray for you. I'll pray for you right now. Please. You absolutely. Please. please. Whatever you want to do, man. I'm going to pray for him. Yeah. Come on. Come on up here. I need some brothers, sisters. Come on up.
We got to bond. Please, one man. Like, please, we come on. Bond this friend. Like, I'm, I'm not in a good shape, man. Like, please. Come here, come here. I'm gonna anoint you. <laughs> right now, in the name of Jesus. Bob. <gasps> There's torment, and there's lying, there's Father, this spirit Father, that's trying to bring him down and trying to destroy his spirit of suicide. I command you to lose right now. In the name of Jesus, I command you to go right now. Right now. I loose you from this. Man, right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now, right now, just give it to him, Lord. Just give it to him right now. Give it to the Lord right now. All of it right now in the name of Jesus. Pour it out. Pour it out. Pour it out to him. Give it to him. Leave it here in his bones. I need it, God. Please. Jesus, calm down. No, 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 don't pray. He's coming. All you got to do is call upon him. He's just calling. He's here, brother. You just call upon him. This is too much for him to carry. This burden's too heavy. We come unto you. Give him peace right now in his mind. Right now, I bind this storm. I bind this thing right now. I rebuke all these emotions right now in the name of Jesus. That's overwhelmed right now, right now, from his head, from the tops of his head to the soles of his feet. Right now. Right now. Yes. Right now. Yes. 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 Father, right now, everyone, Lord, we're in agreement on it, so it has to be done, Lord, Father, according to your word and your will, Father, Father. right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, <laughs> right now, Father, yes, Lord, by your stripes, they are healed and made whole right now, my God, they will not die, they will not die, but they shall live, and they shall declare the works of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. got to change you, brother. My mom, my grandma is my life. He's got to change you. And that's all I have in this. That's why you got to put your trust in my him. My mom's got stage four cancer. My grandma's got stage three cancer. Hey, I'm hey, about hey, to lose hey. them all. But you can't. Now listen, you're, you're saying that negative stuff right there. So we've already prayed the positive stuff. Now listen. Do we you believe? So do we believe by faith, right? Yeah. Now don't get mad and upset. Now listen. Just, just right here. Relax. Relax. Put your trust. Victory. Put your trust in God right now, okay? Because you got the victory. They've got the victory because we believe in that. Amen? They've got the victory in the name of Jesus. Well, you got to claim it. See, don't speak it negative stuff. They're going to live. They're going to live. Speak positive. Yes. You speak life over them. We're speaking life over you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Focus. I don't know how I'm going to move along with that. I'm like, I know yeah. what's going to happen. Like, I know what's going to happen. But I don't know what the hell's going to happen afterwards. Like, what the fuck am I going to do? Yeah, yeah. Without my mom and grandma, what am I going to do? Yeah, that's where we got to put our trust in God. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> come on, let's come over and sit down. Come on, let's go over and sit down. You know, I thank God. I thank God for his goodness and his righteousness, his holiness. You know what? Since we've dedicated this right here just to God, see, we got to let God have his way. 
We gotta let God move. So I want y'all, let's just take a minute. I want everybody in here. I want y'all to be in agreement with me right now. I want y'all right here to agree with me. Because the Bible says two or three, what do we lay hands on? And we ask the Father in Jesus' name, he said, it shall be done. But you got to have that faith and believe that it shall be done, okay? Amen. If you got any doubt in your mind, your heart whatsoever, just agree. Don't, don't think nothing. I want us all to be in one accord, one mind right now in the name of Jesus. Because we need to bind that thing that's on that young man. Because he needs the Lord right now. He needs him right now. You see that. See, that's why we need God in our lives. Amen. Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. Touch, touch him right now, Father God, because he needs you. He needs you more than, than anything ever right now, Father God. He needs your guidance. He needs your touch. He needs your delivering power right now. My God, that you'll move on him and touch him right now, God. Touch him, Father God. Put him on the back, on the back path of righteousness for your name's sake, Father. Because, Lord, he needs you. He needs your guidance, God. He's afraid he's going to lose everything. But you know what? I got a God. I got a God that can, like I said, to move these mountains. The cancer is a mountain. And God's going to move these cancer. And see, Jesus already took the beating on the whipping post. He took it for all of us. So we got to apply our faith and believe and receive that he's going to receive this in the name of Jesus. I'm calling those things as not those they were. Amen. That they're going to live and they're going to be healed and they're going to have such a great testimony. I call it as it is right now. We lose healing, Father. Your healing. Toward them right now in the name of Jesus. Because you said whatever we loose on earth will be loose in heaven. And whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. So, Father, we bind that spirit of affirmity. I bind that spirit of drunkenness right now in the name of Jesus. We come against it. All its wickedness and evilness right now. It's got to go. And I command it to loose him right now. It's got no right. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke it all right now in Jesus' mighty name. My God, my God, my God, my God. Well, praise God. You know, I was kind of wondering where the Lord was going to take us tonight. Now I know. You know, what defiles a man? What defiles a man? If you guys got a, got the Bible, got your Bible, let's go over to uh, let's go over to Matthew. I'm sorry, Mark seven. We're going to read down to twenty three. I'm going to get in the Word. Mark seven. Yeah, Mark seven, uh, one through twenty three. Yeah. I I kind of I, I had two things and didn't know exactly how to go, but. <laughs> See how the Lord's faithful and true, and he shows you which way to go. Yeah. If you're all there, Mark. Not too many people study in the book of Mark and Luke. It's usually Matthew and John, usually a lot of them. But I like to study Mark. Uh, okay, you got the word. This is the uh, New King James Word, and it says, certain one, it says, Then the Pharisees and some of the scribes came together to him, having come from Jerusalem. Now, when they saw <clears throat> some of his disciples eating bread with uh, defiled, let's see, eat, eat bread with defiled, that is, with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands in a special way, holding to the tra traditions of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other things which they have received and hold like the washing of cup, pitchers, copper vessels, and couches. Then the Pharisees and the scribes him, ask him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the traditions of the elders, but eat bread with the unwashed hands? He answered and said unto them, Well, didn't Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites as it is written? This people honor me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrine that commandments of man. Number eight. For laying aside the commandments of God, you hold to the tradition of men, the washing of the, the pitchers and the cups and many other things you do. He said unto them, all too well, you reject the commandments of God, that you may keep your traditions. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and he who curses father and mother, let him be put to death. 
and 11. It says, But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, whatever profits you might have received from me in Corbin, that is the gift to God, then you no longer let me let him do anything for his father or mother, making the word of God of no effect through his traditions, through your traditions, which you have handed down, and many such things you do. When he called, when he called all the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear me, every one of you, understand and understand. There is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile a man. But things which come out of him, those are the things that defiles a man. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. Let, yeah, let him hear. When he had entered the house away from the crowd, his disciples asked him about the parable. So he said to them, Are you thus without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from the outside cannot defile him? Because it does not enter his heart, but his stomach, and is eliminated, thus purif pur purifying all the food. And he said, what comes out of a man defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart, man proceed evil thoughts, adultery, fornication, murder, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, evil eyes, blasphemy, pride, Foolishness, and 23, it says, all these evil things come from within. It defiles the man. See that right there? See, that's the problem with the, uh, with the world today. We have a heart problem. Because, you know, uh, the Bible talks about as the time draws close, that man will get, you know, evil. The, the more thoughts will be evil and evil. And I don't know if you've been seeing this even more, especially if you've been watching this out west, you know how uh, the Black Lives Matter, the uh, 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 Antifa and all that kind of stuff, you know, they're going around and, and uh, pulling people out of their cars and, and they're beating them and, and they're, they're burning places and stuff like this. And then those, those so-called governors out there of those certain states are allowing this stuff. See, well, that's evil thoughts of men. That's what that is. That's what's in their hearts. So they, don't, they don't have God. They reject God. They reject the things and the sayings of God is what they're doing. You know, because this right here, this right here, we need to live by this, the word of God. Because this is everything you need to know how to live for him and how to make it to the kingdom of heaven, how to make it to God. And Jesus said, Jesus said in his word, he said, I am the truth, the life, and the way that no man comes unto the Father but by me. That means none of us will make it to heaven unless we go to Jesus. And we have to put our trust in him. But it takes the Father to draw us to Jesus, you know? Amen? But that's what Jesus did. I don't know if you've seen the word pride. That's the reason why the devil was kicked out of heaven is because of pride. I always say this when I start getting attacked and stuff like this. When the devil comes in at me, floods like a lion, you know, just keeps stacking my mind, keeps going on and on and on. I remind him, sometimes you got to do that. You got to remind him who he is. I always tell him, I said, well, I said, at least my name's written in the Lamb Book of Life. At least I got a chance I'm going to go to heaven. Which you won't. And I said, you got to be pretty stupid. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say it this way too. I said, you got to be pretty stupid if you think you can put your throne, above, your throne above the creator. The one that can snap his finger or even make a thought. Say, think about you just disappearing and you're gone. You're, you're, even your name will be erased from memory. I believe that. Think you can put your throne above God? Oh. But you know what? That's what pride will do. And that's what man has a lot of is pride. Amen? Especially, I mean, man, I mean, that was my, that was one of my downfalls is because um, I had a lot of pride in my heart because, like I said, if you got, if you got in this area right here, this, you're too close. I just didn't allow, this is like my circle. You don't get in my circle. I don't know how many people in here is like that, but God got to where, you know what? God took this circle away from me and he got in my circle. He's in here now. He broke that thing from me, that pride. And he put love. <laughs> he put love in my heart. But that's what he'll do for you too. The Bible talks about, it said that the Father's love, yet when they were sinners, he's commanded his love toward them. And uh, that's what he did on me. After I got saved, man, I'll tell you what, the experience of love of God that I had, I'll tell you what, if you had any pride or envy or anything like that, 
the love of the Father over, overwhelms everything because he'll, 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 he'll want you to. It'll get you, it'll get you to a spot to where you'll want to chase God and you want more of God. You can't get enough of it. You know, and you want to reject these evil ways and these evil thoughts. You know, like what did the Bible say? What did it say right here? It said, from within, out of the heart of man proceed evil thoughts. See, we want our thoughts to be like Christ, right? The mind of Christ. We want the mind of Christ. Amen. We want that. Adultery. Well, you know, when you become the when you become the Lord and child and stuff like this, man, you don't want to do nothing to hurt him. I mean, because he's your best friend. And, you know, if you got a best friend, you ain't, you ain't going to say nothing or try to do nothing to hurt them, right? But that's the way God is. God is our best. He, the Bible talks about he's a, he's, a, he's a friend that's closer than a brother. That's right. He's a friend that is closer than a brother. And, I, and my brother, me and my brother used to be really close. But I'll tell you what, when God came in my life, me and him, he's real close. He's, he's above everything. Amen? Right. And fornication. See, God wants us to flee from these things. He wants to turn our back on sin. He wants us to turn away from it and start turning to him and walk his way. See, I always said the Bible is biblical instruction before leaving earth. Biblical instruction. It will, it will show you how to, to uh, when, you, when, you're, when you're struggling with certain things like this. That's why we come to him. We come to him freely and say, Father, and he already knows you're struggling with it. And probably he's already convicted your heart anyways, you know, and, and, and revealed it to you. What He goes, why didn't you get this out of there? So when you come to him, you cry out, say, Stay delivered me, set me free. He'll take and pull that thing right out of you, set you free. And what he does, he doesn't leave that place void, but he fills it up more with him. He puts a little bit of more him in you. Amen. And he then he starts seeing the resemblance a little bit more of Christ. You know what I'm saying? Because that's because when you get to after about a year or two with my walk with Christ, uh, well, I'll tell you what, God had to, he had to, he had to break me a lot. That's what I say, to break a lot. You know what I mean? He had to pull these things out of me because I had all these old bad habits. I had these tradition of man things. You know, I had to do it my way and this way like this. But God, like Sister back here, was testifying on, we have to do it God's way. We have to do it his way. There's no way but God's way. And that's a choice we're going to make. Amen? Am I talking to somebody tonight? Amen? Yeah, the hard way. Yeah, the hard way. You'll learn the hard way. I heard, I seen a thing on post on some friend. That was asking for a friend request and it said, School of Hard Knocks. <laughs> Anybody relate to that? Sometimes when we learn, sometimes when we learn, we have to learn the School of Hard Knocks. But you know what? That's what about the loving about the Lord is. He'll let you learn. Yeah. Then he'll pick you back up and say, he go like this. He'll come. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just picturing this so you, you can get this in your mind. He kind of, like, since I got my bib, you know, he'll grab me by the thing like this and say, Son, see, I'm trying to tell you this. If you just listened to me, son, if you'd have just listened to me, you wouldn't have went through all this heartbreak. You wouldn't have destroyed a relationship. You wouldn't have done this and that if you would just did what I told you to do. See, that's about the obedience thing, amen. That's what. It, that's what. You know, that's God. That's He's He's a merciful God, and yeah, He'll let you go through some things. But you know what? On the other end of it, as long as it didn't kill you, you know, you, you'll learn from it one way or another. You will learn from it. And I'll tell you, you know, that's something about it, though, when you do go through these things. <clears throat> that's part of your walk with Christ. When you do go, when you do go through these things, and you've been delivered and healed and set free and forgiven. Lord knows I need forgiveness. When he's forgiven you. And also, uh, later on down your walk with Christ like this, somebody will be going through it and you'll be able to help them through it. See, that's part of the testimony. See, I always, I always like to say, What's the first part of the testimony is test. See, when you're going through a test and you're being delivered and brought through it, it turns into a testimony. That's why it's very important that we, the Bible talks about that we're overcomers by our testimony. You know, but see, that's why I can stand up here and say, well, God has delivered me from this, you know, alcohol or drugs or whatever like this. Like I said earlier, somebody could be struggling with those things and they're, and they're sitting there and they're, they're, they've been asking God, they've been questioning God like, can I really be set free? You know, come into a service like this, somebody stands up and says, let me tell you what God has done. Yeah. You know, 20 years, I, 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 this wasn't me, I'm just using this for example. 20 years of addiction, drugs or something like that, but God pulled me out of that mess, set me free, took the taste out of my mouth. Yeah. I've seen men and women be delivered just like that. But you know, they're standing there, they're standing there testifying on something like that. 
And, you know, like I said, you've already been questioning God. It's kind of like now it starts speaking to you. You know, and, and you hear the word say, he's no respect for a person. What he'll do for one, he'll do for the other. Amen. And I mean that. He, he will do for one, he will do for the other. I've seen that many a times. Many a times. All right, I'm going to go over to Luke 6, 45. I'm probably jump around a little bit. <clears throat> I want to, what I'm trying to get to you tonight, what's in the heart. These are, these are the things that are in the heart before you get saved. That this is what defiles a man. It's not, it's not what's on the outside, but it's what's on the inside that comes out of your mouth. You know, uh, the Bible talks about, it said, you'll know by their fruits. You know, so if somebody's claiming to be a Christian, and now, let's see, they could be a new Christian, just come in and struggle with, like, maybe say cussing, which that was me. That was me for the first two years. But you know how, how the Lord broke me of it? Right here. I found it in a word, Colossians 3 8. It talks about these things you must not in your mouth. It talks about filthy communication and some other things, you know. And I went, filthy communication? I wonder what that is. And I looked over in some different translations. That means cussing out of the mouth. In other words, I went, oh, oh, oh. So it's one of them things that, Lord, I'm sorry. You know, repent. You go on. And, and if you're struggling with it, that, I'm just using this for example. I'm not trying to beat anybody up. That, uh, he said, Lord, do you help me with this? Help me. Cause see, because we can't tame this mouth. The Bible talks about, you know, this, this thing is like a, like a deadly viper. It's, like a, it's got a deadly poison. Only, only God can uh, tame this thing because I know I can't do it. Sometimes, you know, so you get angry at somebody and some things, certain thoughts start to raise up in your brain. And it's kind of like, Lord. I've had the Lord say there, get up, get over here. Or hear him say, this stops me dead in my tracks. Just like that. Amen. I've had him do that many a times. Many a times. But that's what our God will do. What I say, Luke 6, 45. This is another one that I like to, I like to quote because it says 45. 45. All right. It says, A good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good. And out of an evil man out of the evil treasures out of the heart brings forth evil. Don't it? We're talking about the treasures. The, see, we got the heavenly treasures in here when you got, when you got the Lord as a Savior. And you got Jesus in here. That's the heavenly treasure. I'm going to read that again. Luke 6 45. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of his evil treasures, out of his heart, brings forth evil. That right there describes it all right there, the heart. You know, there's, a, there's another scripture here, if you give me a second to find it. It talks about out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's what I thought it was. Maybe King James Version. Let's go over to it. I'm going to read that in the King James Version. It says, out of... They say, a good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth that which is good, and evil man out of the treasures of his heart brings forth which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. That's the scripture I was trying to find. Out of abundance, you'll know what's in your heart, what your mouth speaking. Right? Is that what that's saying? Is that the scripture? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth will speak. So if you're speaking death, if you're speaking negative things, if you're speaking death, that's that's in your heart. But if you're you're supposed to be a you're supposed to be a, a, a child of faith, you know, sons and daughters of God, we're supposed to be faith people, and that's what we got to do. We got to start out of our abundance of our heart. We need to speak life. Yeah. See, that's what Jesus did when he came down. What the scripture talks about said, so "There's an enemy that comes to kill, steal, and destroy." Right. But Jesus said, I come to give life and life abundantly. And ain't there also a scripture that says we're supposed to be like what, how Christ did? He left the example here on earth. And we're supposed to live that example, but we're also supposed to show that example. So if he said again, come to give life and life abundantly. Now, what are we supposed to speak? Are we supposed to speak death over people? Or are we supposed to speak life over people? Life. Because when you speak life over people, like especially when you're in a ministry... It has an effect on people. Your words have power, especially when you're speaking the thing, the oracles of God, which that means this right here, that's the oracles of God. 
You're accountable for it. I'm accountable for everything that I'm speaking right here and right now, tonight. That's what scares me. That's the only thing that really scares me real strong. There's two. There's two things that scares me. That's the Lord. I fear him. Because the Bible talks about fear the one that can, don't fear the one that can just destroy the spot, the body. But fear the one that can destroy the body and send you to hell. That's the one you fear. That's God. We fear God. Amen. And that's why I fear God. I fear God with such a respect. I know what he could do to me if I didn't serve him right. That's why I serve him wholeheartedly. And that's a choice that we need to make too tonight. We need to, we need to make the choice that we want to serve him wholeheartedly and give it all to him. See, that's what the brother needs to do. He needs to surrender it all. That's, he's at a point right now, he's, he's a low of a low to God can use this. God's going to use this mightily. You watch. God's going to use this mightily. I believe it, God. See, I already claimed it. I speak it. I believe because I believe that faith. I believe that. I believe God's word is absolute true. When you speak his word, it will not come back void. Well, what was sent forth will accomplish what was sent forth. Because it's God's pleasure for them to be healed. I don't know where their heart's at with him, but you know what? We'll claim that they're saved in the name of Jesus because I believe that. But God can use that. But right now, he's just in a, he's, his mind's not there and right. That's why he's got some kind of substance in him that's controlling his mind thoughts right now. That's why the cussing and stuff was going on. But we know where his heart was at because his heart's broken. Amen. You know, his heart's broken for his grandma and his heart's broken for his mom. You know, I understand. Yeah, his mom and his grandma. I understand that. But that's why we got to pray. See, we got to be parent praying people too. We got to pray. So out of the abundance of, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We speak life over them. That they will live and they will not die. See, the scripture talks about that. That's in uh, Psalms 118.18. It talks about they shall live and they shall not die, but they shall declare the works of the Lord. So your lifestyle is declaring the works of the Lord. So what are you declaring tonight? Are you declaring good works or are you declaring evil works? So like I said, people will know you by your fruits. They will know you by your fruits. Amen. 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 They will know you by your fruits. They will know you by your fruits. Here's that what I did right there. I got all my scriptures on here tonight. <laughs> you know, like you said that, you know, you speak the life and death. You know, and, and the Bible bad about saying, you know, I said, you know, live life. And I was, we had a dog. I was pulling out of the driveway. And all my kids were in the back seat. I couldn't take my dog. You know what happened to my dog? That dog went right, right out in front of me when I got there. It went right with all my kids right with me. You know? So that's why, that's why when God gets a hold of you in an area like that to show you that, you know, and as, as a minister, and just children of God. Yeah. It don't have to be just a pastor or a preacher or evangelist or whatever. It don't have to be just that. It's you. If you're a child of God, yeah. you know, I'm talking, like she said, like over your children. See, you know, as your children, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give an example. As your children are coming up, they're born, and they're born in, you know, if you're serving God and you're bringing them to church and, you know, you're serving God wholeheartedly. You know, you can speak over their life what their life's going to be. God will bring it to pass. So I speak life over them. I said, Lord, they're going to prosper. They're going to be prosperous. And Lord, whatever they touch their hands is going to prosper. And you can also, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, billions and billions of dollars, which if, if it's God's will, it'll be God's will. I'm not going to say that because I'm not a prosperity preacher, okay? You know what I'm saying? But I'm saying that we can, we can prosperity, they're going to be held. And they'll, they'll speak life over people. You know what I'm talking about? So you speak good health over them. Say, oh, you're not sick. If they get a little little sniffle or a little cough, <coughs> oh, are you sick? You say, well, no, that's that's the wrong word to say. Say, you are healed. Yeah. You know, Jesus said, by his stripes. I pray that a lot. I, I say, by his stripes, they are healed. Because see, on that whipping post, not only is the cross, is Jesus, but not as the cross, Jesus on the front took it for our salvation. But on his back, when he was at the whipping post, he took that beating. For our healing too. See the heal the very first healing starts with you getting saved. Because then he can use you. Then he'll heal your heart. Because I'll tell you what, when you're out in the world and you're doing all this and that and the kind of stuff, you're what did the Bible say, fornication and adultery and, and lewdness and all that kind of stuff. Did it quit? No. Oh, but anyway. <laughs> no, I just said that. Adultery, fornication. No. When we was out doing all that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, you know, and that's 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 just what you naturally did. That's what the world would do. You know, lie, cheat, cuss. You know, whatever. 
Do what you got to do to get by. But you know what? God says, put your trust in me. I'll take care of it. He's got whatever it is. I don't care what it is. He's got it. He's going to take care of it. Amen. Let's go over to uh, Luke 6. Oh, wait a minute. Wrong one. Wrong one. Sorry. It's John 7, 7, 24. John 7, 24. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. That right there is why I, I, I some people say that said that we have a right to judge by righteous judgment. I don't judge anybody, but I, I wanted to use that scripture tonight in, in, the, in the way that brought it around about what's in the heart. See the problem the problem with us humans when we see somebody that's uh, all 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 strung out on dope or something like that, you know, first thought one thing, hey, you know, what they do to, you know, what they do to get to that point, you know, what, you know, why did they take that first thing and, and they got hooked, you know, we start thinking bad things, what I'm trying to say, so we're, we're kind of judging their outside, I see, but see, God, God looks at the heart, God knows what's in the heart, see, that person could have been molested or, uh, 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 beaten up real bad when they was younger or something like that, you know, and, and maybe they, they turned to drugs to, to, for the numbness. But see, we got a God. That's why, children, that's why we, we need to speak life and death to people. You know what I'm saying? We need to speak life to people and not death because there's people out there that are already dying. You know, the drugs and alcohol and stuff like this is already killing them. But they need somebody to hear. They need to hear somebody that speaks positive to them. You know, lift them up, you know. Be there to help them, you know. Be there to encourage them. You know, sometimes sometimes you might have to get stepped on two or three times. But I'm telling you what, when when it's all said and done, and when the, and you're praying for them and you're lifting them up before the Lord and the Lord gets a hold of them, you know, remember where he brought you from. Where he pulled you out of that, that miry clay. Pulled you up out of it like this and cleaned you off, you know, washed you by the blood. You know what I'm saying? He washed you and he made you white as snow. Put a new heart in you. Remember that. He's going to do the same for that person. He loves that person just as much as he loves you. And he wants to change their life too. Oh, and when he changes those lives, he molds and makes and shapes them the way he wants to be. And that's where we need to be a point in our lives. We need God. That's why we need God. We need God. I need God more every day. I need him. And I asked him that. I said, Lord, if there's anything in this heart, I don't want wickedness in there. I don't want lust in my heart. I don't want adultery in my heart. I don't want fortification. I don't want these things. Lewdness, pride. You know, I want to be humble before God. And if there's anything in here, God, get it out. Cleanse me, make me whole. But I always so pray that too. I said, Lord, I said, mold me, make me, shape me the way you want me to be. Like the potter and the clay. You know, you ever, you ever seen one do it? They'll take that clay and the He'll slap a big thing down. Just think about that being you, being in the mud. He just takes, pulls you out of the mud and goes, Pfft. he's got up there that spinning wheel going, going like this. He's molding you. I guess half that. Let's pull this one out. That's fast. Let's, let's put a little bit more there, you know. He's still molding and shaping. That's what he's doing. And finally, when we arrive to a perfection, we're with him. See what I'm saying? I feel the, I feel the spirit on that one. That's the only time we become perfect, by the way, is when we're, when we're taken. Amen. So, Let's live for the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's honor the Lord. Let's let people see Christ in us. Amen? Amen. And, hey, speak life over your children. Yeah. Speak life over your husband, wife, your spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend. Speak life over them. Tell them that they're beautiful. Tell them all. I don't care. I might be the ugliest person in the world, but you know what? Still the beautifulest person in God's eyes. Amen? Amen. You are. You're his. You're his. You're highly favored. You're special in the eyes of God. So don't let anybody tell you different. Don't let that lying devil beat you up either. Hey, tell him he's lying. Remind him his past. Remind him of his future. He I was going to say, he reminds you of your past, but remind him of his future. See, one day, he's going to be burning in the lake of fire, and he's going to be tormented. And that's the place where I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, let me do it. Let me one time. Let me down there. Let me torment him, just like he did us. But he won't. Drop the charges on me. I'm, I'm free. Are you free tonight? Are you free tonight? Yeah. Set free by the blood of the Lamb. Amen.
Hallelujah. I thank God. I thank you for setting me free tonight. Oh, man. God is good. God is real good. So if you're struggling with things, ask God, what is it? You know, you need to do a daily check. The Bible talks about examine yourself and see if you're still in the faith. And so, to see God, God's going to God's gonna judge the church first. He's judging us first. But examine your hearts. If there's things in there that you see, say, Lord, show me. Reveal these things. And he will. And you just got to say, take them. I give them to you. He will. He will. I promise you that. That's one thing I can promise. I know what God will do. He's delivering and set me free. But he's also a miracle working God. So I need to ask this tonight also too. You know, if, if, if you're not right with the Lord, you know, let's make it right tonight. Let's, the altars here all the time are always open. Feel free to come up and pray anytime you want. If one of us is up here preaching or teaching or whatever, and you feel that tug like something's going like this, just come up here and get down on your knees and seek God. Come on up. Pray. If you need prayer tonight, if you just need prayer for your body, come on up and we'll pray for you. We'll pray with you tonight.